few summers ago, me and my family took a trip to India. We were in the tourist district, outside New Delhi's Red Fort, an iconic symbol of India, just like the Taj Mahal. While we were walking, there were two girls who attempted to get my attention. They wanted to paint my feet with henna. It had been a really long day, so my parents said okay, and I sat down on the sidewalk and let them begin. Now, I was a young kid then, and the process of designing the henna was long and painstaking. So, I opened up my backpack and took out a picture book. While I was reading it, I noticed the younger of the two girls peering over my shoulder and trying to see what I was reading. Trying to be polite, I offered the book to her, but she shook her head and said no. I was confused. If she had displayed such an interest two seconds ago, why didn't she want to read it now? Then the thought struck me. Maybe she couldn't read. I was a little kid then, so it didn't really bother me. But a few months ago, as I was remembering the trip, the distinct encounter kept coming back to me in troubling ways. I thought of how reading has enriched my life in so many ways, how it's let me communicate more eloquently with other people, how it's let me express my ideas and thoughts exactly how I want them to be said, how it's let me learn about the world around me and chronicle what happens, and how it's assisted me with my music. Then I thought, if reading has had such a positive impact on my life, how not reading would have such a negative impact on other people's lives. I thought of how children in uneducated families, like those girls in India, how without reading, how they'd be missing out on so much fun, so many opportunities, and be missing out on a chance to gain the knowledge that I've gained with having access to books and being able to read. Then I got kind of upset because while I was in India, I would see people, poor people, walking the streets with cell phones. And I wondered, why are cell phones a more common investment than books? Why is reading no longer a priority anymore? Seven hundred and seventy-four million adults in this world are illiterate, and two-thirds of those are women. 98% of illiterate people are concentrated in three major areas, Sub-Saharan Africa, South and West Asia, and the Arab states. But even though one in four people in developing countries cannot read, this is not just a problem that pertains to the developing world. Here in the US, some of us take literacy for granted, see it as a chore. One would think, or at least I thought that America, a first world, extremely advanced country, would have extraordinarily high literacy rates, around the 97th percentile, a lot less than 97 out of 100 people in this country can read. 32 million adults in the US can't read, which is 14% of our population. 21% of adults in the US read below a fifth grade level. 19% of high school graduates can't read at a basic level. Why is this the case with the amazing education systems that we have in this country? As of 2011, America was the only country where the current generation was less educated than the previous one. But do you know what the saddest thing about this is? These statistics have not improved for 10 years. Why are we not focusing on making this issue better? While we here are fortunate to live on the outskirts of the most literate city in the country, Washington, D.C., the literacy levels are not uniform, with some parts of the district having higher than 50% illiteracy rates. Some of our neighbors here in D.C. cannot read a basic doctor's medical instruction. They cannot bank or file taxes simply because they are illiterate. The U.S. continues to have one of the highest relative child poverty rates among developed countries. This is because how are kids supposed to break this vicious cycle of having uneducated parents who therefore don't educate their children? 
According to the Department of Justice, the link between academic failure, delinquency, violence and crime is all welded to reading failure. And these statistics of those in juvenile detention back up these claims, with 85% of juvenile offenders being functionally illiterate. This is clearly not an easy issue to solve or it would have been fixed by now. There have been numerous attempts by volunteers and organizations all over the globe, but, and they have had some degree of success. But what I've noticed is that every single one of these programs, these organizations, they take place in places where literate people frequent, like a library or a bookstore or a school. But let's spread this movement. Let's start developing story corners. Let's go to malls. We have play areas in most malls. Why not a story corner? Why not a place for kids to read? Everyone has to go to the grocery store once or twice a week. Why don't we set up a story corner there? There's an option. I want one day to be able to go back to India. I want to be able to sit on that sidewalk and I want to be able to have those girls do my henna again. But what I want this time is for me to be able to offer them my book, but for them to take it, for them to be able to read it, and for them to be able to enjoy it and gain knowledge from it and have the same reading experience that I did. Thank you.